Hi there, my name is Mark, and this is the story of how I almost got kidnapped on my way to school by a Project Zorgo hacker. It happened a little less than a year ago. It was a bright, chirpy morning, and every kid around the neighborhood had already gotten up to get ready for school. I would usually wake up a little earlier than most kids so that I could have ample time to pack my bag and walk to my school that wasn't too far away from my house. Plus, it also gave me extra time to watch my favorite YouTuber, Chad Wild Clay. I would always watch his videos on my way to school, with one hand holding a granola bar while the other held my phone that I was watching from. I always loved to see him and his friends fighting the all-evil Project Zorgo, and it would always bring a smile to my face. I figured it was the best way to wake myself up and get ready for the long day ahead of me. However, on this very day, my alarm broke down and didn't ring while I, on the other hand, was still peacefully sleeping under the covers, snoring away, unaware of the current situation. It wasn't until I heard the yells of my mother coming from downstairs, screaming at me to get out of bed, that I was already really late for school. I slowly opened my eyes and noticed that the sun was already out. I looked over at my alarm clock, and it was still showing 6.30 a.m. That's not right. I immediately sprang up from my bed, feeling a little flustered and shocked, as I rubbed my sleepy eyes a couple of times before scrambling my way towards the bathroom as I got myself cleaned up. Not even ten minutes later, I got changed and ran down the stairs, as my mother held up my backpack for me by the door, nagging at me to hurry up. Bye, Mom! With that, I grabbed my backpack out of her hands and sprinted out the door as fast as I could. I then made my way through the neighborhood, running past every block, as I constantly checked my watch, feeling very anxious and scared of what punishment I might get from the teachers. Sweat dripped down my forehead as I reached the intersection that I would always encounter with. On normal days, I would usually take the left route, as it seemed like a safer path, with streets of busy cars and people passing by. However, on the downside, it was a much longer route, as it was one big circle that led to my school. Needless to say, the right route seemed a lot sketchier and unsafe. It was a dark alley that, strangely enough, didn't have as many people on the other side. It was a lot quieter, and it gave me the chills whenever I walked past it. But you'll probably have guessed it by now. It was a much faster path to take, and it was just a straight, clean route that led right to the entrance of my school. I bit my nails anxiously as I stood there, unable to make my decision. I asked myself, what's the worst that could happen? It was 7.55 a.m., and I was, no doubt, in a lot of trouble already. I shouldn't make things worse for everybody. I gathered up the courage and swallowed the big lump in my throat while adjusting the straps of my heavy backpack, taking tiny steps towards the right route. You can do this, I told myself as I began to briskly walk my way through the dark alley, keeping my head high up, making sure that the coast was clear. It was foggy and eerily silent, with the faint squeaking sounds of rats nearby. The entire place smelled of smoke and ash, and it was getting a little hard to breathe and see. I felt very afraid and vulnerable, and just wanted this to be over as soon as possible. Come on, come on, come on, I muttered to myself, constantly looking over my shoulder to ensure that no one was following me. When just then, I felt a hard tug on one of my straps. I gasped loudly, but was only pulled back by something, and I screamed at the top of my lungs. But there wasn't anyone around. That was it. I was going to get kidnapped, and my parents are never, ever going to find me. The strange person covered my mouth from behind with his glove, muffling my cries for help as I desperately tried to set myself free, kicking my legs in the air. I looked up to see who it was, and lo and behold, it was a Project Zorgo member. His distinct mask creepily looked down on me as I cried loudly for my mother to come save me, but it was useless. It was then that I deeply regretted my decision of picking the right route. If only I went with my gut feeling, things wouldn't have turned out this way. Stop right there, Project Zorgo scum! A loud voice suddenly shouted from behind. As a natural instinct, both the Project Zorgo member and I froze, and we turned around slowly. That voice sounds oddly familiar, I thought to myself quietly, still feeling extremely frightened. My eyes widened in shock when I saw who it was. It was him! Chad Wild Clay and his spy ninja friends Regina and Daniel, all here to save the day once again like in his YouTube videos. They stood triumphantly as a trio, standing firm in their positions as Chad pointed his finger right at the Project Zorgo member, ordering him to leave me alone. 
The Project Sorgo member shook his head and chuckled evilly, pulling me away as he made a run for it, causing me to scream loudly. Let's go get him, spy ninjas! Together, the three of them dashed towards us as Chad tried to grab a hold of the Project Sorgo member's hoodie several times, but the Project Sorgo member was just too fast to catch on. Here, I'll help you! Daniel exclaimed in between pants as he gave Chad a little push from behind, just enough for Clay to get a hold of the Project Sorgo member's hoodie and tackle him down to the ground, finally setting me free. I have a bomb with me that will self-destruct in a few seconds, and if you don't leave right now, I will place this bomb inside your hoodie. Chad yelled at the Project Zorgo member loudly as he whipped out a red box with wires all around it, in which the Project Zorgo member whimpered loudly under him, begging him to let him go. If we catch you messing with this kid one more time, we will come and get you and finish you for good, Regina demanded as the four of us watched the Project Zorgo member scramble his way out of Clay's grasp, begging profusely for us not to hurt him. Now go back to your pathetic Project Zorgo leader. Daniel yelled, and with that, the Project Zorgo member ran his way through the bushes, disappearing into the fog. I was still in shock at what had just happened. The fact that I almost got kidnapped was still too much to take in. But I was also feeling really ecstatic at the same time, as Chad Wild Clay and the Spy Ninjas were right here with me. It was almost like the thought of me being late for school was forgotten, as I was just over the moon. To add on, they had also just saved my life from a Project Zorgo member, and I couldn't think of a way to thank them enough. Chad patted me on the back and smiled warmly as his friends gathered around me. Let's get you to school, kid, he responded in a calm voice, ensuring that I wasn't scared or anything. I nodded my head, and we made our way to my school together. Soon enough, we were already here, and everybody was in class. I stepped on my steps and turned around with a wide grin on my face. Thank you so much for saving my life today, I exclaimed excitedly and gave them all a big hug as they set me off for school waving goodbye to me. Anytime, kid, Chad responded, his face plastered with the biggest smile I'd ever seen. I now regret not asking him where V was since she was the only spy ninja missing that day. Maybe she went undercover for a secret mission? Anyway, from that day on, I always told myself to take the left route no matter what. Even though I was an hour late for school that day and was reprimanded many times by my teachers and parents, it was all still worth it, and I don't think I will ever be able to forget that fateful day anytime soon. A big thank you to Mark for sharing his story. Let us know in the comments below if you liked it. 